Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Free Market Prep, brought to you by MarketFi. I'm your co-host, Joel Alconin, along with Brianna Valeski. We have Scott Redler on the line, Chief Strategist at T3 Live and T3 Trading Group. Scott, how you doing this morning? I'm doing good. How's everything over there? Uh, did you get any of this uh, 49, 50-degree weather uh, over the weekend? We had that uh, yesterday morning. It was a little chilly from my Sunday morning swim. Actually, I was supposed to pour earlier on Sunday and it held out, which is good because my son had a soccer uh, uh, travel game. So it actually was good that the weather held out and now it's just uh, it's pouring here now and it's probably going to stay like this till Tuesday. So at least it gave us the weekend for a little family time. Okay, and uh, also the weekend, I know you're busy uh, looking at your charts and setting your game plan up for the upcoming week. Uh, I'm just was earlier talking with one of our guests about this kind of vacuum area and the S and P's, the spiders, whatever you want to call it. Uh, two hundred five to two hundred uh, twenty one hundred five to twenty one fifteen. Uh, chopped through it pretty good on Friday. Just going through that area like like a hot knife through butter in the pre market trading. Uh, any levels in that area or anything that you're keeping an eye on here off the open, just as far as the broad market is concerned. Yeah, you know, I've been watching the S&P, and I think everyone has, and anyone trading it is probably just as frustrated as, uh, actually, I'm more frustrated trading it than watching it because um, there's been no momentum. And any time that the market looks like it's about to break lower, like you had, like last Tuesday, and if you reduced risk, Wednesday, all of a sudden, you know, you had a, a engulfing bar to make people cover some shorts and maybe even look long again, and then Thursday had a bit of an inside day, and then Friday, boom, right back below the 21 day. So today we come in with the futures are up five, six handles off the lows of the morning, but then off the highs of the last half hour. So it looks though like we're, we're forming an apex, you know, that this tight range is getting as tight as it possibly could be. And then that's typically when every bull has been worn out. Every bear has been worn out and you get some kind of resolution. And the beauty of a tight range is at least your points of reference. So what I'm looking at, um, just from the, Support side, you, you can't get too bearish unless we break below, I would say, 2100 to 2104. That's last week's range. If you break and close below that, I think active traders will probably take risk down again, maybe even think about getting short. But that also means that today's up open fails. And if we happen to you know, hold today's up open and start to close above 2120, then I think you know people are going to start looking to add to longs that maybe we test 2134 and continue to go. But you know, the range is getting tighter, and the bulls definitely have some arguments. The bears have some arguments. The traders looking for foul through or probably don't have a lot of hair left. <laughs> exactly. Well, Scott, one thing about your analysis, and I know you you really delve into the technicals, but uh, you also you don't really pay close attention to the macros. And boy, we got a lot of stuff going on this week uh, that could have an impact on the markets. And you know, you gotta you gotta be you know cognizant of those things you really can't trade off well what's greece going to do what greece is not going to do but uh boy oh boy it sure sounds like greece is trying to dig its way out of the hole here and get a deal done uh are you paying any attention to those headlines until you have a do you have a game plan either way yeah i feel like you have to you know being a technician right now is not a bunch it's not about green and red bars anymore it's, it's what's going on in the world and how does the market respond to it and as much as people don't really care, it, it's Greece story has been so, you know, just long in the tooth. Um, if Greece did leave, you know, and, and the deal didn't get done and they went back to the drachma, there would be some volatility, even though people are saying it's priced into the downside system. Who's exposed? What's the damage? And what happens in some of the weaker, you know, nations like Italy, Spain, whatever. Um, if it does get done, okay, it's almost like, okay, there's no extra exposure. We probably get some kind of, um, relief pop because it's out of the way. At this point, it's still, you know, out there, and it's not. It's not really the priority of the market. I think more the priority of the market is when the lift off, and what does that mean, you know, and how does that value things? When do they do the first rate hike, and then do they stop or do they continue? So I think that's really the the, the nuts and bolts focus. You know, Greece is just a little bit psychological. Um, so again, this week you have a lot going on, and. And uh, there was no deal done Sunday with Greece, and, and there's still rhetoric going on back and forth. And I think June 5th is the next big date, but that's multi days away. So, uh, with that being said, you know, we have to just watch more of the market versus 
um, the headlines, but know that the headlines could be coming out soon. Uh, it just going to, uh, you know, economic data, you know, Friday's numbers, <laughs> anything but that would, you know, really support raising interest rates here. Anything you're looking for U- U.S. Uh, economic data uh, this week to perhaps, uh, you know, give us a little bit of clue of uh, what the, when the Fed, if they're going to move ever to raise interest rates. Hmm. Well, yeah, the jobs report on Friday. Um, is it another Goldilocks type number or is it a little bit hotter? Um, or is, you know, or is it not? I think the Fed, I've said it like, I'm not an economist, but like two, three months ago, I was just like, my cut's telling me September. They're going to do something in September. So I would think if we have a, a in line to a little bit strong number Friday, that helps to give them the conviction to do it. But I think they somewhat have that, I think they somewhat have their mind made up already. And, you know, if I was a betting man, I would say September is going to be when something happens. And that might be the only thing that happens for all of 2015, but at least it's something. And I, I don't. I think the market almost wants it to happen to get it out of the way. All right, let's move on to some uh, high beta tech here. Uh, Apple uh, looked like uh, near the end of last week it was going to, you know, just clear, get back up to those all-time highs. Uh, kind of fell back under 130. Looks like we're forming a little bit of a consolidation here. What's your take on Apple for today and uh, perhaps for the rest of the week? I'm going to watch it for psychological, you know, reasons for the market. And plus, I'm going to trade it. I'm going to try and trade it. Um, and I was in it, you know, for a lot of May. And that big wide range bar down, if you remember that bar, that was, uh, I think, on uh, uh, May 26th. That got me out of the stock to just wait. And that's when also when the market, you know, closed below the 8 and 21 days. So I'm I'm flat Apple right in here. Um, I'm going to see, you know, you, you, do, you do see some type of upper wedge, um, you know, forming in the high end of the range. Some you know, bears are calling for a triple top, which, you know, you don't see many triple tops out there. I mean, usually it's either a double top or a triple top means, you know, in the fourth time it gets through. So we'll see if there's a fourth time or not. Um, you know, at least he's had to find level. Last week's low is 129.10 to 129.90. Can't get too bearish on Apple unless you get a, you know, or actively bearish on Apple unless you get a close below that. If today's gap up holds, I'd probably work my way back into a long. And then if it closes above, 13145ish I think you know that would get some of us in a little bit more a bigger tier and then we'll see whether or not this time it can cleanly break above that 133 on its way back to the highs of 134 plus so at this point I come in flat apple and I'm going to see if if it's worth me working into because if if it happens to go from green to red today and closes below 12990 you know I got to believe some active shorts not long term shorts are going to try and press a little bit for some cash flow. Taking a look at Netflix here, you had the uh, pop and the, just a consolidation after earnings, and that was a long consolidation from uh, April 20th, 21st, all the way through the middle of May, and then, I don't know, it's probably like a price target raise. You had another gap. Now you're getting another consolidation. Another consolidation just to move higher here in Netflix? Or is there, do you got a trigger on a sell side or maybe to try short? First of all, I still get good emails from, and, tw- and tweets on Twitter when we talked about it in March when I was like, you do not short Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Puts you out of business. You know, but anyway, since earnings, there has been some decent setups. And, you know, on Friday, it looked like there was a decent long setup. You know, it looked like if we were to trade above um, that Wednesday candle, which was from uh, 527 and 629, you'd get a little bit of a push and follow through. Instead, it pushed through and then closed like $7 off the highs. And that's probably why this, there's frustration with momentum traders. You know, a stock like that pushes through 629, you'd expect it to throw $10 and pay you versus push through $2 and then full six. I and mean, then you have to figure out whether or not you need to hold it. So, you know, giving it a little bit more room, you look, you, you see that it's been following the eight day moving average, you know, since, since earnings basically. So in order for this, you know, strong, strong momentum trend to change, it would have to probably break and close below, you know, 620 ish, um, with Friday's low at 622.69. So I think, you know, that's, give us some clues as far as momentum at this point. You know, after you have all these base on base moves to the upside, you don't want to go back to the well too many times with too much size because you know if the market does break to the downside, these type of stocks can get bit hard pretty fast. And I would just keep your tier size lower and keep quick fee with Netflix and you know the shorts have been dead wrong, but you don't want to be the last one holding the bag if uh, you haven't deployed. 
Do you get involved in these uh, these merger deals? I mean, it's been talked about forever. Intel and Altera, you know, the $54 takeout level. Do you get, get involved in those, or is it just too hard for you to identify the risk-reward ratio or the catalyst? I tend not to, but I've actually been long Altera for work pretty much on and off, but mostly on for about three months. You know why? Because it was interesting when, when we first announced that deal, you know, back in, um, what was it, like April-ish, um, I didn't get involved. But then on that second move to the upside, which was right around April 9th, I'm like, you know, I was looking, I was looking at it and I was like, you know what, this makes sense. And I bought some options. I bought some actual June options. And so I'm like, I could give myself a lot of time. Um, and then, you know, I got my options taken away. Well, actually, they were late May. Um, you know, when it, on May 1st, you look at the size of that move. Um, you know, and I, and I made money on it. I didn't make a lot of money on it. But then when I wanted to get back in the options, the, the spread was like 3 by 9. And then I looked at other options. They were like 5 by 10. So in other words, the options players did not want anyone to buy options because they kind of knew a deal would happen. So the option market told me that, I feel most likely happens because I've never seen spreads like that. So I would always be bidding for these options at a dollar above a bid and still never get hit. So anyway, I was you know, I was holding the stock, and I have to admit that on Friday I cleaned out most of my longs because I thought the market was vulnerable. I had Altera, and I sold it, and I'm not <laughs> long it for this $3 up move, and it is what it is. It happens. Yeah, it does. Okay, so what about uh, Humana here? <laughs> what a move on Friday. Nothing has uh, transpired over the weekend. Uh, do you, you or your traders get involved in uh, in Humana? Um, I don't know. I wasn't in the office Friday. I know some of, some people did get hurt um, in Bristol Myers trying to buy that down move. Um, but you know, recently these these spiky moves have, have paid off because there's not a lot of action in the market. So I think one thing that's good for traders to do is maybe make sure they have filters up on their desktop because. You, know, you want to get in these things early when you see a spike in volume. You don't want to get it in towards the tail end. But you know, you can see a chart like Humana that had a spike in volume and it had a nice chart where it cleared 183. Technically, it was a buy also versus you know just what took place. And recently, uh, you know, where there's fuel, this fire, and it's more, more of these deals are happening versus you know not happening. So especially if it continues all day long. So it's, without any news, maybe there'll probably be a little bit of weakness because, you know, everyone wants immediate gratification. But recently, traders that trade the news are, are looking for these things, and they're combining it with charts and volume, and it's been giving them spots to actually trade versus sitting names that aren't trading volume, aren't moving around, or even the indices that are in these choppy, monotonous ranges. Right. Um, but, you know, if you got in that early enough on Friday, it looks like technically there was a spot to buy it, and you didn't have to be in it the whole time either. Uh, and if you're, you know, if you're long a stock or you're looking for a catalyst, uh, of course, uh, putting yourself up for sale is, you know, what what uh, investor trader wants to hear. And uh, also, if you're exploring that through uh, Goldman Sachs, uh, wow, what more could you ask for? Uh, that happened with Yelp here as well, and uh, kind of the initial of. Uh, Fervor has kind of died down. It did hit that $50 level, filled the gap from trading and Yelp. Now we've come back down here. What's your, what's your take on Yelp? You know, I, I went out and I bought some, I think I bought some July calls just to be in it because trading it's hard. And I do think that, you know, the, the correction that Yelp's had and the foothold in the business, there there is potential for a takeover. So I think that you know, it's better to, to try and get into some options on the quiet days, now when it's up two, three bucks because they, they choose the premium. So, you know, on some of the quiet days, if you happen to think, you know what, there's some fire behind that move in, in Yelp that's been holding the majority of it since, you know, that May spike, you know, go out and buy, just give yourself enough time. You know, buy like the, the, the August 50s or the August 55s. So this way, you know, you're not in harm's way because it, it, it is somewhat of a broken name. And if there's no deal, chances are it's not going to do much. But if there is a deal and you want to be involved, I would be, in, you know, options because the risk at least is premium pay. That's why when my Altera options ran out, I didn't go far enough out, I, I couldn't get back into the options because the spreads were too wide. And I didn't just want to sit long a name for a potential takeover because that kind of breaks my rules. I don't like to do that because I don't, you know, a lot, back in the day, 90% of the time it doesn't happen. Lately, it's been actually, you know, happening a bit. So I would say if you're looking for a takeover in Yelp, 
I would just go into, you know, some August calls and, and sitting them and, and sitting them versus, you know, trading the, the news back and forth. But every now and then on a three minute chart, they have some kind of news hits on it. You know, you can make some active cash flow, but you just might not be able to sit into it once the volume dies down. And uh, what about the trading activity in Shake Shack? Uh, is that something you, boy, this thing loves to move one way or another here. How are you looking at the chart in Shake Shack? Well, last week we had a great trade. You know, look at the red dog reversal. People want to know what a red dog reversal is. Look at um, look look at the move down all the way where the low is seventy three thirteen. Okay, the day after it broke below that, hit seventy one twenty, and once it went back above seventy three, you could have been a buyer of Shaq with a two dollar stop with the twenty one day support underneath you after a move down from ninety five. You could have traded for a day trade and made three four dollars, and then you could have held a third specifically. When you get that reversal pattern, you hold a little bit, and then that day two Friday, look at that. You could have just made almost $9 in Shaq with a $2 risk. That's why I love that setup. Now, at this particular point, I'm not sure what it's doing pre-market because I'm you know, in the back studio, but I would think maybe you get a red dog reversal the other way. Pushes up a little bit, comes you know back below 83, maybe even you know short this little end of the range. So today I'll look at it to see if um, it's opening up. I might look for a fade to go red. But um, I know the other day I actually made some decent money long, you know, trying to use a calculated long setup versus catching a long knife, and it worked really well on Thursday. Right, and uh, you know you're out on a move like that because the low's in place, and you know if it if they come and get you, they come and get you. If not, then you know it's a trade where you can keep moving your stop up. Uh, social media uh, hasn't really been the hot trade lately. Uh, just make a comment. I know you like to follow Facebook uh, very closely. Uh, can you want to comment on the training action in Facebook and maybe Twitter? Facebook's just a choppy mess still. You know, you had that igniting bar that, uh, you know, that actually had some follow-through on uh, May 14th, and then I thought maybe it could flag and it would hold up and then continue to the upside, and every time it you know, has hit that topper end around 80. First, it was 81.50, and then 81, and then 80.78. It's just failing into that, and then you had some weakness on Friday. It's below the 8 21 day. I have no position of Facebook here, but it seems like after every down day, you get an up day. So, you know, let's see if that changes. Um, you have a little support here at, um, what is that, 78.88. That's Friday as well, and I, I don't know. Just it's. If you're if you're in it from like a year ago, you probably have not much to worry about. If you're trying to trade as a swing trade now, it, it, it's not really showing you much. You really have to get like above eighty fifty with some kind of crazy volume and authority for it to start moving better to the upside. It's not. There's really not much going on there except that you narrow your, you narrow your time frame to three and five minute charts and try and you know pick apart a little cash flow. And as far as Twitter, Twitter's been in the penalty box at earnings report and. Not much going on in this lower end of the range, and you know, I don't think it's a focus. If you want to be long a little bit versus um, you know, 36.10, which is the recent low, okay. But overall, it's still you know, just rebuilding and it's got to get a new identity because the most likely, in my opinion, is not getting taken over by Google anytime soon, but it's going to have to start showing some real earnings traction you know, to get some uh, bulls back interested again here. Uh, something. There's something different than what's going on here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I was looking at this thing and uh, did get pit, uh, popped this in one day over 37 and then just couldn't hold that, pulled right back to that area. So maybe try and buy, buy that on some strength above 37. Uh, before we let maybe. you go, I, oh, I'm sorry, Scott, what were you going to say? No, no, I hear you. I was in there that day also. Um, when you get those little spikes in, in Twitter, what you do is then quickly put three and five minute charts on and make sure that it holds the momentum of the day because once it seems like it loses the momentum of the day you know you can't buy that dip it just turns into a drifter yeah actually i was looking at i had some of the 37 weeklies on that and i'm like well if this is really going to go it should go to 37.70 or 37.78 and it didn't so luckily i cut out of that one uh tesla uh, boy this thing is just not moving here kind of like a little bit of a sleepy giant here holding this 250 level any takes on tesla yeah, you know, it's, it, it it has moved, you know, in perspective. In April, this thing was 201. Now we're uh, in June, two months later, and we're close to 250. So 40 points amongst friends is still a move. It just, you know, at this point, whether it can continue the move, it's been, 
it's been riding the eight days, you know, touching it a little bit lower here and there. Um, I'd say on an active level for the week, um, you know, it's still in my game plan. Uh, I was I actually traded it on, on, on Friday when it, it pushed above that uh, 250, 180 and just didn't have momentum, but the market was kind of weak. So I would say at this point, you know, you could probably on an active level be long versus 249. That's the eight day and see if it can go sideways, but it's not really tight. I like trading Tesla when it's tight, when you know it breaks through an area, you know, shorts into cover, and then there's some room. At this point, from where it closed to Friday's high, it's got to go two and a half dollars before it can even break above that pivot. So, uh, an inside day or so would go a long way here for a, a better setup. But for now, it's still more of a long than a short until the eight day gets breached with authority. Scott Redler, Chief Strategist at T3 Live and T3 Training Group, joins us every Monday at 9 o'clock to give us his insights on the mar- markets, both macro and, of course, throwing in his expert technicals. Scott, thanks for coming on. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next Monday. Sounds great. Thank you.